are back with Behind the Bikini. This is episode number 36. And just so you guys know, before we start recording, we always have to check and see which episode we are on. But we are at episode 36. And if you, have, if you haven't done so already, like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things. Uh, share this with your friends that could potentially benefit from it. And uh, let's get rolling because it feels like it's been forever since we've done this because it's been over a week because you were you were traveling all last week and everything. So how did that all go for you? It was good. It was a great week in Orlando. Um, I mean, I was in Florida, so, you know, I missed Arizona, but it was good. Yeah. It was a great week. Clash was a class was a hard show. If I'm just being honest, the judging was a little off for me and um, my girls didn't do as well as I would have hoped, but that's the sport. We took the feedback yeah. and we're going to keep going. But um, overall, it was a great weekend, really good weekend. The athletes had a lot of fun and Clash is always such a great show. Joe does such a such a great job. Something cool that he did too is we um, on Friday night we did an event. Me and Jessica Dolius, where we had all we invited all the athletes. It was really an open event for everybody, and they were able to kind of like walk the stage, and then we were able to tell first time competitors like the flow of the show. Yeah. And that was really cool. I mean, you know, especially that stage. It's it, it's known to have a little bit of like buckling on the floor and stuff. So they were all like finding where they wanted to like hit their posing and stuff. But it was really cool. It was like a mock show and it was ran really well. So that was really fun to be a part of. Did they go through like comparisons and everything, or what did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, the DJ was there. He like turned oh, up the music, and nice. all the girls were just kind of in like their uh, their tanning gear, and but they all had their heels on, and we ran them through like quarter turns and stuff. We didn't fix any of their poses or anything right. like that um just literally just trying to give them the flow of the show and then it was really cool to see the first time athletes that were at that friday event in the show on saturday and they just looked so much more relaxed and comfortable yes. and you could tell they were looking for their spot on stage they wanted to stand and it was it was pretty valuable it was it was really cool you know they used to do that at the athlete meetings like on Saturday morning and they used to do that all the time. I can remember, I mean, there were several times where like I was there and they would have me come up and demo the, the bikini posing or something like that. And then they would show how you're going to walk on and walk off and all those kinds of things. Like that's what the athlete meeting was for. I don't think they do that very often anymore. I can't remember the last time they did something like that. Yeah. Like the athlete meeting these days, it's so funny because all the athletes, you know, I haven't been to a show before I let, I make them go to the athlete meeting. Yeah. At least time but yeah you know yeah. after the first time you've seen them all right Usually they're like thanking everybody and the promoters and talking about the judges but like when i was sitting in there as an amateur and i was always afraid to ask questions of course because i'm nervous but like yeah. i was wondering, like what's what side of the stage do i come out on and what right. side of the stage do i exit on and do we do the comparisons first do you do the individuals first and those are kind of the things that are just yelled to you right before you go on stage mm -hmm. i wish that they would just give more of like the flow of the of the show and the athlete meeting but i feel like they've kind of pulled away from that but I agree with you. Like if they could get on stage before they get on stage, before yeah. people are in the room and stuff, I just feel like that's so valuable to their anxiety and how they're 100%. feeling about it. You know, and I, I mean, I tell the girls all the time when you're going to check in on Friday, if the stage is set up, go, go walk it. You know what Me I mean? Me too. Bring, bring your just, heels. Walk yeah, it. yeah. Just so you can get a feel for it. And that really helps. I mean, even just for myself, that helps. I, I yeah. want to get on the stage and feel what it feels like to, because every stage flooring is different. I was talking about this uh, this past weekend at my group class when I did back in the day, Wasatch Warrior was Salt City Showdown. So when it was Salt City Showdown is when I did it. Okay. And um, the flooring was rubber. So like it's a nonstick flooring. So yeah. when you go out there with your heels, you literally can't pivot. Like you yeah. stick, you stick it's it to a it. Step. Yeah. yeah. And like, so the first time I stepped on that stage was when we were doing the, the initial walkout, the initial comparisons, right. Where they're just doing the first looks. And I hit the stage and I was like, what the hell is this? I was like, I don't even know how to turn around. <laughs> why, like, why do my feet feel like they're stuck to the yeah, ground? Yeah. It was terrible. I was like, I've never, and that's the only time I've ever been on a stage like that before. And I was just like, what am I? what am I doing? Like my foot literally is stuck to the ground. <laughs> That's the worst kind of stage. And then the Pittsburgh stages like North Americans with that high profile carpet. It, it's pretty much the same feeling. You feel stuck mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. face and like your mm -hmm. heel like gets caught in the, in mm -hmm. the carpet. Yep. I already, yeah. I only did that show once when it was in the tent in 2022. And I was like, never again. I am not yeah. turning pro here. Oh, I am tent. not turning pro here. That's so funny. <laughs> so back, back again, back in the day, um, they, <laughs> they had it in, um, where did they have it? I think it was, it was in Ohio. Was it in Cincinnati? That's where it was. I don't remember. I don't remember which city it was. North was Americans. It? Yeah. It was, either oh, wow. it was either Cleveland or Cincinnati. It was in Ohio. 
Okay. And they had this um, old venue. It was like an old theater, like, like almost, like, almost reminds you of like a church with like the way that it was all sculpted and stuff. Cool. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But the carpet was shag. <laughs> shag carpet it was the worst thing ever and like it's like almost like you're you have like little pitfalls where you're like in it. and it was literally this thick it wasn't it wasn't like an expo stage carpet it was shag carpet and it was like like orange and like green because it was like from like the 70s it was terrible it was so bad that's suicide so bad. to me that is oh. literally suicide like i would horrible uh, no <laughs> that was a messed up show. That was a messed up show. So, long story short, the guy that was the head the head judge of that show is no longer with the organization, and he was just really, really disrespectful to the, the bikini girls. And I said something. I reached out, and said something. I said it was ridiculous. I was like, I paid my entry fee to be here. I shouldn't be talked to like that on stage. Like he was, Good for like, you. yeah, like he was telling the girls when they turned around. He's like, oh, that's better. Like on the mic. Like basically saying it's better to look at their ass than it is to look at their face is basically what you're saying in some of the classes, right? He's and probably not around anymore, is he? He's not. No, he's not in the organization at all anymore. He's mm -hmm. been kicked, he was kicked out a long time ago. And yeah. we actually ended up getting an apology letter. Gary Udit sent out an apology letter to all of the bikini girls saying that they 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 apologized for the way that it, it was that we were treated, basically. <laughs> I was like, well, thank you, because it, it was terrible. <laughs> Good job, Gary. Terrible. I know, right? Job, Gary. I know. Like sometimes you can't control what happens that day, but you can control how you respond to it. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just because that guy did something, obviously that's not Gary's fault, you know, no. but he bared responsibility for bringing 100%. him on or whatever. But that's all you need is it's just yeah. an acknowledgement and I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, and not, he's, he's again he's no, he's no longer right. part of the organization. Exactly. There are definitely reasons why. Yep. You know? That wasn't the only reason. That was just one of them, you know. Uh, but um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if that's if that happened once, it's probably happened a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was not a good thing. So yeah. But uh, but yeah, those are you know the back in my day situations. Um, you know, going back to the, the competitor meeting, again, back when I was doing figure and NPC. Again, another head judge that is no longer with the organization. Um, during the competitor meeting, you know, he was going through what you're going to do on stage and all that kind of stuff. And he told the figure competitors that we weren't allowed to twist in our quarter turns. Yeah. So, again, back in the day, figure used to be front pose. The quarter turn was exactly the same as your front pose. No twisting. Okay. Okay. Back, back pose, quarter turn, again, exactly the same as your front pose. No twisting. Hmm. Right. So that's how figure used to be when they did quarter turns. And then they started the twists and everything on the quarter turns. Um, and that was when I was competing. We I've never had to pose like that before, ever. And this was like three years into me competing or something like that. And he told us at the athlete meeting that morning that we couldn't twist in our quarter turns. And I was like, I have never posed like this before in my life. I was like, I don't I don't know what I, I was like. I, all of us were freaking out. So it was like, I, I'm used to how I've been practicing with my transitions and my turns, all this kind of stuff. And he was like, no, you can't turn. So what'd you do? I just didn't turn. <laughs> I was like, I went up and I hit my front pose in every single pose, except for my back pose. My back pose. That confuses me. Like, what are they, what, what would they be grading? You just would look straight up and down here. Like you would see a delt. Which is exactly why the, the pose has changed Change. because it's just stupid, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, just like back in the day, they used to have the one piece for a figure. Like, why do you need a That's one right. piece? Right, right, yeah. I was like, so that the was midsection the wasn't as prevalent then? I think it was just so they could see, I guess, symmetry better. I don't know. I, yeah. I think part of it, too, to be honest, is that figure was really the only division besides female bodybuilding. So they were just trying to find something else for the women to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was just they gave him another round just because for the ones that didn't want to look like yeah an open so, men's bodybuilder <laughs> I guess I was like I was like I, I, and then they started adding they added in women's physique and bikini and, and all that kind of stuff so once they had more divisions I honestly think that it was there because they were just trying to waste time to be perfectly honest because I don't know what else you could judge from a one piece that you can't the judge piece, from a two piece a side shot with no curvature yeah that's yeah. so weird I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad it's developed. So, <laughs> no, the last year, the one piece was the year right before I started competing. And then they started taking it out. And they started take, taking it out of the, um, the NPC. And you're like, that. yes. I more know, God. <laughs> well, think about it, too. The, the expense. You have to have two suits. And figure um, suits are expensive. The, yeah, one pieces, the one pieces were even more expensive than the two pieces. Yeah. More fabric, more jewels. Mm hmm Yep. And they had to be better constructed too, because if you had a longer torso or a shorter torso, you need more. Yeah, you can get away with a lot more with two pieces than you can with one piece. Dang. Yeah. So, so even better yeah. for that too. I know. Be thankful, <laughs> ladies. You only have to have one suit for stage now. <laughs> 
Because I'm except, not at a except for fitness, you guys right. have your right, right, right. your uh, whatever your. Um... And you got to remember too, back in the day, it was all Swarovski. Everybody, everybody was spending like twelve hundred dollars for their suits. Everybody. So yeah. that was my first suit. I was like a thousand bucks on my first suit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Most people are. Most people yep. are. You know, and so you think about it that way. This is much more expensive too, and it's just like for what reason? Like, there's right. no. I don't understand what the purpose was behind it. You know, so hence why you started making suits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna be my own. That's right. I'll make my own. Well, that's. I mean, honestly, I my first suit that I bought, I bought from a lady who did um, uh, figure uh, figure skating costumes. She wasn't uh, even. She wasn't even a did. suit designer. Yeah, she was just yeah. figure figure skating. She'd done a few uh, figure suits, and my coach at the time was like, "You can get yours from her." That kind of thing, and that's what I did. Um, what did I spend on it? I spent I spent four fifty on it. It was very little stoning. It was, but it was pretty. It worked. Right. Right. Um, and then I sold it, and I sold it for four hundred dollars. So I got almost all my money back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Hell yeah, you did. Yep. Yeah. I was like, screw it. I'm gonna make my own now. And then yeah. that's how it's kind of snowballed from there. So. Yeah, I really do think the jewels make a like difference. There's, um, I, I saw a girl get a suit and just like you know like the one, 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 mm-hmm. one. You know, it's just kind of scattered. Yeah. Um, it really does make a difference to get those it things does. fully encrusted. So you know, if you can't afford it now, start saving now. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of suit sales. I don't know if you do that, Sean. Like Black Friday, like those major oh, yeah. holidays, things like that. Like, and just wait for those major sales to come out. Yep. But. I well, definitely we do, think it makes a difference. We do the payment plans too. So even, yeah. even if you're not buying it on sale, like, cause we do sales as well, but even if you're not buying it on sale, we have payment plans where you can do two payments or three payments. So if you're getting into a prep and the payments are 30, 30 days apart, if you're getting into a prep, buy your suit at the beginning, by the time you get to, to show time, you paid your suit off. Pay you know off. What I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, then you get what you really want and you, it looks, it looks good and all those kinds of things too. I mean, uh, you know, and resale value. Yeah. And Most that's girls I want a too. fully encrusted suit. So if you're going to want to sell it one day, like get something that's going to sell again. That's right. And take care of your suit too, because I try to tell people I'm like, they're, they're still fragile. You know what I mean? Like don't bend your connectors. I see this all the time. Now that the connectors are so thin, girls bend the connectors. And it's like, it's going to snap right apart. Like you can't mm-hmm. just throw this around like a normal piece of cloth. It's not, it's not, you yep. know, you gotta, you gotta take good care of it, you know, by the hard case. It's yeah. worth it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I have these little cases that are like, they look like little luggage pieces. I know those are fantastic. so cute. Those <laughs> yeah. are so, and, and they're perfect to pack in your bag. Like they yeah, pack I, so well. I put yeah. my suit in my carry on. So but, yeah. like, yeah. Or, yeah, on, on my hand with me. Yeah. Cause I used to so have, easy. right. I used to have the, those cup cases, you know, the cup cases, they look like two that's bra pieces. A, yeah. That's what I have. It's so big. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. 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 That's why. I, that's maybe why you could send me a luggage one, one. <laughs> yeah. uh, right? I'll give you one for for my for our uh, behind the bikini podcast. Uh, whatever. We should get stickers made. We should get I know, stickers right? made. We should get stickers patches for like yes. the for like the the wolf pack bags. <laughs> You're yeah, like, oh, writing down. <laughs> writing this down. I love it. I am little, all the behind the bikini games are like, oh my I god, know, right? I want a patch. Where's we actually need to do stuff like that because I think people would, would buy little, I think it's cute. It's like we got, we could put together a little uh, product launch, like with like tank tops or something like that. I could have yeah. it on my table at Meet yeah. the Olympians when all the BTV yeah. come up. I love it. We, okay. We totally just thought of that on the spot here. <laughs> Side note. <laughs> this, this is not, this is no longer a podcast. This is a brainstorming session. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome it. to me and Sean's business. Phase. I know, right? Right. We're like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But literally, this is how things happen, though. You just start talking, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, let's do this. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's. I mean, that's how. The that's how the greatest started. ideas are born. Yeah, that's. It really is. You're like, I can join you anytime on your on your on your thing. I was like, well, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> and before you know it, now we get a podcast. <laughs> and here we are in episode thirty-six. I know, right? I know. So. Um, so before we get into, to, into the topic, which we didn't even say this yet, we're going to talk about criteria today. So a lot of the things we're talking about right now are going to fit right into the, the topic for today. Um, yes. But before we do that, you're in prep. So how's the prep going? Oh, I'm having a great week. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Um, yeah, last week in Florida, like after my, after my check-in or whatever, my weight was just sticking, 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 mm-hmm. just wouldn't go. And then, um, it's so funny. It's like my body always knows when Jamie's around. So then we go to, we get to Orlando Thursday, Jamie gets in Thursday night, you know, we're all in the hotel. We go to bed, wake up Friday morning for my check-in, drop two pounds wow. for my check-in day. I was like, 
Yes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I dropped a pound and a half yesterday morning. And then I dropped another pound this morning. I'm like, what's wow, happening? what's going on right now? So, hey, body's responding. So everything's yeah. moving very well. Uh, last week, she dropped my food a little bit, but we started carb cycling. So food's still pretty high. I mean, I'm hungry, but nothing crazy. And I'm just really trying to push myself like on my cardio because I feel like if I could keep my cardio like lower, but like really give all I can and yeah, that, that time frame, it's working for me right now. So um, everything's going good though. Can't complain good. this week. Yeah. How about well, you're, you? You're giving me hope because I think you started like a week before I did. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like right in the spot where you are, right? Like I, my, my weight stuck. Like I didn't, I haven't dropped weight. I dropped like a half a pound when I check in last week. This week I haven't, didn't drop anything. I'm exactly the same. Yep. But my normal glutes, my glutes went up a, a half an inch. I don't know how my glutes went up, but they did. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well maybe I'm just fill it out. I don't know. Um, Such a brain and method. I know, right? For real. Um, so I don't know. I'm like I look firmer. I look tighter. Um, I look all those things. My weight just hasn't moved. So. I see Jamie next week in Pittsburgh, so maybe I'll have the same, tra same trajectory as you, yeah. <laughs> and maybe I'll drop five pounds overnight. Listen, like, I, it's so funny, because, like, everybody at this point is like, how's your prep? I was talking to Lauren Bear in the gym the other day, and I was like, I finally dropped weight. She goes, oh, I know you and your body. You don't drop the first five. It's like, everybody knows that Jordan Brandon doesn't drop the first That's five so to funny. six weeks. That's but so it's, funny. But it's normal, you know? Yeah. So, you know, well, you know if you're following the plan, and, like, yeah. I told you last week, like, I feel leaner. Like, why is the scale not moving? But that's just where you just got to keep your head down, stay, but it will come. It will that's come. Right. You know that. That's right. I'm, and that's what I said. I was like, and I'm not on the, any specific timeline either. You know what I mean? Like I have a range of shows that I have that I could, there's a shit ton of shows when we get to, to September, October, which yeah. is where I'm, I'm headed, you know? So at yeah. this point, I'm just like, if my, if my body wants to do this, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Right. Like I'm not, I'm going to do my, again, stick to my plan. And if it, if it responds great, if not, we figure out why. And then we just, change it up or whatever it might be and, and go from there. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, I have to do this, you know, that's yep. not, that's not where I'm at. So, and I, and you know, I know I have to put size on. So I'm like, well, if I'm growing and, and into this, I'm good. You know, like I, I'm okay with that. So growing and, and shrinking is like and, the perfect combination. I, know. I was yeah. like, well, I mean, my waistline's the same. My, I just, when I look at my photos, I can see, like, I can see more, not even definition, but like, shape if that makes sense you know like i can see my glutes are shaping out better than they were just a couple of weeks ago you know and it's not like i'm even I, I might be dropping a little bit of body fat a little bit but it's just the i don't know the density the conditioning the fullness i can see it's getting better over the last couple of weeks so we'll just see what happens you know and at the end of the day i want to be bigger this time when i'm on stage anyway so i'm not concerned about dropping weight really fast or anything like that that's the other thing too ever since i because i'm kind of like you where when I was not with Jamie, the initial like first couple of weeks of prep, it would be like, boom, everything's gone. Like I drop weight real fast. And then since I've been with Jamie, no, now it's like, it's like, I'm steady, steady, steady. Then I'll do a drop. And then I'm yeah. steady, 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 the drop, you know, it's not, it's not a consistent thing. It's just not. So yeah. I, I think that's just because I have more muscle and it just depends on how much, you know, how full you are and, and all those kinds of things as you go along. If you're fuller, you're going to hold more weight. It just is what it is, you know? So if you're, if you've got a lot of carbs, you're not going to drop a lot of weight, you know? So yeah, it's kind of that mind, that mind fuck of like, I'm happy I'm not dropping. Cause that means yeah. that I'm I'm holding on to tissue, right. but also I'm supposed to be dropping. That's right. So it's it's that just that yeah. mental battle with yourself. Yep. So that's why I'm just like, that's that. This is why coaches have coaches because that's if right. it was me, I would have I would have cut my slash my calories three weeks ago. I'd have been doing an hour cardio already. Not needed. Not no. necessary. Like well, you know, and I look at different things too. Like I mentioned this in my post yesterday. Like I'm getting vascular again through my arms and my shoulders. You know, that's something that's happened over the last couple of weeks. I didn't have that be the, before that. I was just softer a few weeks ago. You know, it's like I'm getting a little bit harder. I'm getting a little bit leaner. You can see it in different ways. So it's not always about the scale. Correct. So that's where I'm at right now, and I'm just like, do do do. This <laughs> cool. Keep cruising. Over. Yeah. One or two weeks. Like, yes. I don't I know. like me today. Yeah. I know. I'm like, that's You're right behind me. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I'm on the same trajectory you are, and I'll be fine. <laughs> but again, I'll get to see Jamie next week in Pittsburgh, um, and then New York too the following week. So um, it's not like it's. I'm not concerned about. It. And then I probably won't see her. Are you Are you coming for a GC Pro Am? I am. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys then. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do an in-person podcast that weekend. 
Let's do it. Yeah. I have I have six athletes that weekend though, so we'll have to. Yeah, I have, I have a bunch too. I mean, I, I, yeah. I live right here. <laughs> you know, I kind of have That's a few. That's a really, really popular show for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's a popular show for a lot of people. It's grown quite a bit. You know? Yeah, um, I love that show. Job. The stage is really pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that show. I actually need to talk to them because I got to see what they're doing with commentary. I usually do the commentary for that show, and I haven't talked Ooh, to them about that yet. So I'm, we'll see. Maybe I'll, yeah. I. I don't know if they're. I'm a, they didn't do it for the Warrior Classic. They didn't do commentary for Warrior because they didn't have pros this year. But I think that they're. DC still gonna, will. Yeah, I think they're still going to yeah. do it for DC. Yeah. Oh yeah. So mm-hmm. um, it should be bikini and MP. Yeah, for pros. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. But other than that, just kind of rolling along. I mean, you know, the, the, as you know, the season's getting busy right now. So it's like every time I turn around, I feel like I got something else I got to do. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like even though I don't, if I, if I don't have like clients set up that day, I'm like, I got a million things I got to do as far as everything else, you know? So it's, it's, it's a good time. It's a stressful time, but it's like a good stress. You know what I mean? So it's absolutely. Like, okay. Yeah. Like I, work is so busy right now, but I like it because it just uh-huh. keeps me so bit my brain busy and the days are going by fast. So I think that's why too, yeah. like this prep's a little bit easier for me mentally, just because like I am so busy and it's, it, I like that when I'm in You prep. just execute, you execute versus yeah. thinking too much about it, which is where yeah. I'm at right now too. I'm just going to do it. You know, one of the things that I've always had, an, not always, but that like recently I've had an issue with is just getting my steps in during the day because I sit at my computer so much. Yeah. And so it's been beautiful weather. And my neighborhood, if I take a big loop around the whole neighborhood, it takes me about, depending on my speed, it takes me about a half an hour to 45 minutes. And when I do that, I get my steps in for the day, you know? So I know if I can go get a walk in, I'm good. You know what I mean? So as long it's as I get your that steps, in But day, also your mental too, yeah. you know, just getting out for 30 minutes in the sunshine. And yeah. It's a, be- a break. You know, beautiful neighborhood. There's yeah. you know, dogs and kids and everything all over the place. So it's, it's, it's nice. And People in my neighborhood walk all the time too. So it's like you you see people walking around doing the same thing. So it's, Safe. it's, it's actually really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's really what I like good. to do too. Like on my consult, like on a Monday or like Wednesday when I'm super busy, but I have consult calls, I'll just go up to the roof and I'll take my call, walk, come yeah. back down, and go back up, take my call. And it's good. It just gets, it just changes the pace, you yep. know? Sun I wish. Is- I wish I could do calls on my walk, but again, I live in the middle of nowhere, so my signal drops. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, Signal's whatever. Yeah. Like I was, ta- I was on the phone with Jamie actually on Sunday. We were talking about about Clash, and um, I'm si- I'm just sitting in my office. She's like, your phone's dropping out. I was like, hang on, let me go outside. <laughs> I was like, it's me. It's not you. Yeah. It's me. I'm like, I know. I already know. <laughs> like go outside. One second. So just. Being in the middle of nowhere, but oh well, yep. it works. So um, it's pretty to look at, not good for cell signal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I say all the time, if if we lose our Wi-Fi, we're screwed. I mean, yeah. there's just like there's it there's certain areas like where I am right now in my office, zero cell signal, zero, none. So like if somebody tries to call me, the, it'll ring through, but I gotta run outside in order to get in order to pick it up. That stinks. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So which sucks because I can't sit on my computer and do that. I do have an office right upstairs above me where I can set up my laptop and I can be on the phone at the same time. So whenever I do calls and stuff like that, that's like my call. <laughs> it's my call the area. Call room and then the yeah, office. For real. It's, a, it's just crazy. I have to be in different areas of my house in order to do different things. Whatever. <laughs> one floor, one floor closer to the satellite. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. It's so weird. And it's like, even, even the upstairs, like if I'm not in that office area and I try to go like into my living room, if I go in my living room, the signal will drop out. So that's so annoying. Yeah, whatever. I'm like, can you hear me? Now? Good. I know, right? Can you hear me now? We've, Good. Well, we've said we haven't done it yet, but we've always said we like we need to get a landline phone here because if 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 our signal drops, we're, we're screwed. Like yeah. we can't get a hold of people. So get a satellite phone. Uh, yeah, we need to do something. Something so we're, we're not cut, so we're not cut off from the rest yeah. of the world. <laughs> then you can use that in the apocalypse to I know. contact aliens, and, right? You know, whatever. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. So. But yeah, so I actually checked in with Jamie today, so we'll see what uh, what my what my feedback is on it and all that kind of fun stuff, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, you are not going to Pittsburgh. Where are you going next week? You're you're moving next week. Next week I'm moving to a same building, just a two bedroom. Um, but this weekend is the uh, athlete summit, the Fit Body. Oh, that's athlete. right. So yeah, I'm yeah, for yeah. San Antonio tomorrow. Okay. And then next weekend is my off weekend, but I'm moving. And then the following weekend's Junior USA, so I'll be in Charleston. You know, I always hate that they have Junior USA's and the New York Pro on the same weekend. Yeah, me I, too. I, I I have to pick between the two. <clears throat> me too. So. And, yep. So I got to be at Junior USA's. Charleston's my spot and I have athletes in the show. So. Well, that's where you won your pro card, right? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And my yeah. first pro win. So it's very Oh, special. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I sponsored that show for several years. And then, you know, I would go back and forth between New York or, or Junior USA. And what I found at this point, I have like one or two people that do Junior USA. So I tend to go to New York because then I can go see my family. Yeah. Because uh, they're in upstate. And then I can do, you know, commentary and stuff for New York. People yeah. tune in for that. So yeah. it ends up being a little bit better. So one of the, one of my other girls is going to go with me to New York too. And she's, Good. she's, in prep, she's in prep and she's like, this will be a good opportunity for me to like get some motivation and see a big show and all that. I was like, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Yeah. So, it's New York um, pro. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. So it's exciting. Uh -huh. I even like, you know, I like watching the guys at that show too, because it, it has like big implement. Big in, in, what's the word I'm looking for? Implications. implications. There we go. I was like, I can't say it. Implications for the Olympia and all that stuff too. So like I kind of like when you and I are at separate shows too, because I have eyes on this and you have eyes on that. Yeah, and then we absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's helpful. Like even this past weekend at Clash, I was like texting you. You're like, I'm with my girls. I was like, oh, damn. I know. You're like, what's going on on stage? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, it's, it's so funny because I have people doing different stuff. Like I had one of my clients screen recording the live and then I was reaching, cause I reached out to Jamie too. And I was like, I was like getting all of the viewpoints. I was like, can somebody help me? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what, what I'm do we see here? <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. Cause I agree. It was a little, you know, I talked about it in my live. I was like, it was a little off with the, with the judging and stuff like that, but I understand it. But at the same time, I was like, that's not how I would have judged it, you know? So yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So. It's what it is. That's a part of our sport, but you know? Right? Yeah. Yep. It's tough. So. It's, it's tough. With that, that's a good yep. segue into criteria. Yes. So yes. we thought interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. Prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code QTIES15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. We thought we would go through this because I feel like... Um, people don't realize how in depth the criteria actually is. So let me pull this up. Real I quick. feel like some people don't even realize that there is a criteria. Yeah. Agreed. So it is a written criteria and they have it for every division. So I'm just pulling up bikini because, you know, obviously that's what we talk about here mostly, but Hey, I know her. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that. I was like, you're right here on the, on the cover too. So <laughs> <laughs> um, if you if you go to NPC News Online and you just click down on the rules right here, they have it for every division. So you've got everything right here. So we've got bikini up. Um, and we're just going to go through this like little by little and kind of give some some more in depth on it. So they've got the official bikini rules here. You can watch the videos, and everything like that too. Um, so the this is and this is across the board. Like I talked about this a little bit on my on my live last night. You're gonna see different things from NPC to IPB just because of the athletes being better when they're pros versus when they're amateurs. But the criteria is the same. If you look at this right here, it says NPC and IFBB Pro League criteria for judging women's bikini competitors. So it's the same, right? What's different is the level of development and the athletes that are on stage. That's what's different. It's not the criteria. So we tend to hear that a lot. It's like, oh, I think these judges judge this way or that way. They're judging as close to the criteria as they can get. But sometimes that, that day there are not competitors that actually fit the criteria. So they've got to fit those competitors into those criteria boxes as best as they can. Yeah, so and they're not, picking what's best that day and that show. That's right. That's right. So... Again, criteria for judging female physiques. Muscularity is first. The amount of muscle will vary between the divisions. Second is condition. It will vary to be, be, depending on the division. Third is symmetry and balance. Fourth is presentation. You're posing. Um, for bikini, they go into more depth, depth here. But as you can see, this is not a, and I hear this sometimes too, like, well, I was better conditioned than that, that athlete. Well, that's only one of these points. There's four points here. There's one, two, three, four points. So just, just because your conditioning was better, 
does not mean that you beat that other person on those other three points, right? So that's one thing that I, I that when it comes to this kind of thing, what you have control over on stage is you have control over the amount of muscle that you bring. You have control over your conditioning, whether you're too hard, too soft, or right down the middle. You have control over your presentation. You kind of sort of don't have the best control over your symmetry and balance sometimes. That's a lot of that's genetics, right? Yeah. You can you can do that based on how you build your muscle. You know what I mean? You can fix that based on how you build your muscle. But some people are just born better. You know, we talk about this all the time. There's always going to be genetic freaks. And if they're just born with better symmetry and balance, how they actually fill their frame out, there's not a whole lot you can do about that, you know? So before we go into more depth into this, anything you wanted to add from those first four criteria points? <clears throat> no, no. I just, um, I, I love that they included presentation and posing because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people just do, don't value this as much. You know, they mm -hmm. just feel like they're bringing a killer physique, but they have no clue how to present it. Yep. And uh, something that Drew and I talk about often is, you know, if you're going to go for a pro card, a part of that is showing up like a pro and mm -hmm. you have to look like a pro and that comes down to your polish and your posing. So I love that they included that piece in there. Absolutely. And, you know, again, going back to when we get up into these higher levels, like when we're looking at the girls that were top call out at the clash for girl power, that those that presentation stuff, all of those little teeny tiny details make a huge difference. It makes sure a huge do. difference. That's why yeah. when you sit and you do these anal analyze, analyzing these shows, it's like, okay, well, her suit bottom could have been a little bit higher, could have covered a little bit more, covered a little less. Her suit top didn't cover quite enough. Her, uh, it wasn't the right color. Her makeup was a little off. Her hair was a little frizzy. Her pose was a little bit twisted too much. You know, all those kinds of things. Those are teeny tiny little presentation details that get judged. It's, yeah. part, it's part of the criteria, regardless of how good their physiques are, because at that level, all of the physiques are amazing. Yeah, so, at a top national level and especially in the league, like those things matter. So, yeah, you know, as an amateur, if that's, if you're very serious about it, like just start working on those things now and then they'll never be an issue for you. That's find right. your look, find how your hair doesn't look frizzy in the mornings, like find the polish. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it says two, bikini. Bikini athletes should display, one, a foundation of muscle, which gives shape to the female body. Two, Full round glutes with a slight separation between the hamstring and glute area. Small roundness, small amount of roundness in the delts. A conditioned core. Your overall look, hair, makeup, suit, and tan. Again, that's judged. And then it also goes into what bikini athletes should not display, which is muscular density seen as a, in a figure physique. Squared glutes. Muscle separation seen in figure competitors. Graininess and striations everywhere. Okay. So they're, they're, they're drawing a line. So when you hear a foundation of muscle, which gives shape to the female body, what does that say to you? What does that tell you when you, when you hear that kind of verbiage? The number one word in that is shape. Um, you know, Sandy is very clear that she will pick shape over the best conditioning every time. She wants to see round and bubbliness. The point of the, the bikini criteria is it is, is it is the most muscular category and it's supposed to be the most attainable category. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so a big part of the reason you guys know my story of in 2020 when I didn't get my pro card and everybody else did is my feedback from that show at Tampa Pro is to come in a hair tighter. And I showed up to Junior USA's like eight pounds lighter and looked like a freaking skeleton. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm like this is it. Like, this is conditioning. Like, this is crazy. Look at all these separations. And that's not the look. Like, that's it, I did not look healthy. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as I came out, I was I was move to the outside. They will pick a girl that's slightly less in shape, but has more fullness and bubbliness every single time. So shape, you know, this is a bodybuilding competition is what I tell people all the time that you're signing up for. Like you can't be showing up looking like a skeleton or looking like you don't have muscle. They want to see that roundness and that fullness and healthy, you know, yeah. goes into the the, um, the core, they don't want to see a really defined shredded six pack. They just yep. want to see a nice flat abdominal region, like, mm -hmm. you know, so healthy, healthy, but lean. Yep. And then it goes back to the ribbiness in that in section too. I've mentioned this a few times that local show that we had here a few weeks ago, um, the two girls that were battling for the overall, one of them, the one that won had a little bit of a better shape. She wasn't quite as conditioned as the girl that was like second overall, but the girl that was second overall was sucking in so hard. All you saw was ribs all over the place. And that's not a good look. You know, she was a little bit like she had a little less shape in her glutes than the other girl did. If you were judging just on conditioning, the girl that came in second overall would have taken the overall. 
she would have taken it. But the girl that took the overall had a better shape, had better fullness, had better roundness overall. So yeah. they, they do look at that. And this is actually a debate that I got into actually on commentary last year at DC Pro-Am. I was talking to my co my co-commentator um, and we were sitting there. He's, he's also a judge and everything like that. This is the difference between male, male and female judges sometimes. Men tend to judge harder and more conditioned. Women tend to judge more shape and fullness and roundness. Yes. <laughs> so I always, my eye always goes to shape first. Always. Me, me too. Yep. Always. And because I think we, we look for, like you said, healthy and beauty. Like we look for that. Um, you can go from that to being too conditioned like that yep. really, really quick. And so we have to always keep the criteria in mind and in check. Um, and a lot of times that's what female judges do on a panel to be honest with you, like they help to kind of bring that, 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 okay, we look for the freak factor and the, this person came in in shape, but we, we've got to remember this is the criteria. Absolutely. Right? And don't get me wrong. Like I love the freak factor. Like yeah. I love yeah. that look, but that's mm -hmm. not our sport. That's, that's not right. this criteria. That's right. And I agree with you, Sean. Like I see with the male judges that they tend to go on that, that, you know, more conditioned side, but then mm -hmm. if you have another female on the panel, they kind of, you know, then that's honestly kind of like the toughest panel because you're yeah. like, are, are the guys going to win in this class or yeah. are the girls going to talk them into, you know, picking something different? So it's, it's difficult, but that's where you got to, you know, understand your, you, you got to lean on your coach to find number one, the right show for you and the right judging panel. It does matter, you know, based yes. on how you look and things like that, but um, yep. absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yes. Conditioning is key in our yep. sport in the right level of conditioning. Yeah. And it's hard. Like if you don't, if you're not in this daily, it's hard to see the difference. It's really hard to see the difference. It's an eye. Yeah. It absolutely is. Even if you're in this daily, like we were just talking about this before we get on here, sometimes competitors just can't see themselves clearly. They think they're fluffy when they're not, you know, like it's, it's, that's why you need that objective eye to look at you and say, no, you need to actually put some more size on or no, you actually need to be a little bit tighter. Um, I think it goes both ways. I think a lot of times what people think is they think um, they see fullness and roundness and they think that that means more body fat when it doesn't. <laughs> Fullness and roundness means you're in shape and you can fill the muscle out. That's that's what it is. It's there's a difference between being full and round and full of food, and then there's a the same conditioning level and not full of food. There's there's two completely different looks. You know, filling that muscle belly out that like we talk about with the with if you go to grill a steak, you know, a steak is raw. It's nice and full and round and has all that marbling and everything and like that. But if you stick it into onto the grill and you just charcoal it down to nothing, it's just gonna go. Phew. You know, you need to fill it all out and make it nice and juicy and round. And that's, that's what we do when we're trying to get on stage. We're trying to fill out that muscle belly, you know? Yes. And that's the difference. That's the difference yeah. there. You know, and that's what they're saying here. Like I was talking about this a little bit on the, on my live last night, because they were asking about the difference between um, open bikini and master's bikini. Master's bikini competitors have a tendency to have a little bit more graininess and a little bit more striation than what you're going to see from open competitors. And that's simply because of muscle density and maturity, right? You know, one of the things I mentioned last night is if you've got somebody who's in their 40s versus somebody in their 20s, that person in their 40s has been lifting for 20 years longer than that person in their 20s. They should be denser. <laughs> they should be thicker. They should have more muscle. They should after 20 years. You know, if they don't, they've been doing something wrong. <laughs> you Absolutely. know what I mean? So that's the difference. It's, it's not that the criteria is different. It's that the bodies are different. You know, and for masters athletes, I don't know if you agree, you know, too, Sean, they have to get a little bit more conditioned than the yeah. open girls just because of skin mm -hmm. and age and things like that. And they tend to go a little bit more conditioned in the masters category. That's kind of the, um, the, the challenge for yes. masters is how lean can they get and core control and things like that. So with a little bit more conditioning, you're going to see a little bit more green, green, That's right. green even. And um, they don't want to see striations, but they a little bit more separation. I notice in the masters classes, they allow them to get away with. So yes, again, I it's agree. that eye and going to shows and understanding what they're picking. Yep. Um, no, and I, I, I agree with what you're saying because that comes to the overall look as well as far as like the skin and all of those kinds of things. That's part of it. We're going to get down into this a little bit more. They do mention skin tone. Um, you know, all of that stuff does make a difference. And like as a master's athlete, you do have to get a little bit further down. Your hormones are different. So you're going to hold fat in different areas. So you do have to peel it off a little bit, a little bit more in order to get it to come off. Absolutely. Um, it's just, it's just part of it. It's just part of, and again, it's not something to be, 
I guess, upset about because you should be at that level if you're, tw- if you're 20 years further d- developed in the sport than somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's just part of it. So, um, and like they said, they said, no, you know, they don't want to see muscular density seen in a figure competitor. You know, when you, when you get to um, a certain level of muscularity, they are going to tell you you're too big. And at that point you have to make a decision. Are you going to, are you going to peel it down and stay in bikini? Or are you going to keep going and build further, maybe go to wellness or go to figure, you know? Um, when you see the, the words squared glutes, what does squared glutes mean to you? I, I see squared glutes when people are flexing their glutes in a uh, back pose. Actually, I was just on a posing call right before this and her back pose just didn't look right. And then I noticed that when she was hitting her back pose, I would see her quads flex. And I was like, are you squeezing your glutes? And oh. she was like, I don't know, am I? And then I just had her relax and arch. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, your glutes look so much better. They're just round and bubbly. She's like, oh, that's it. That's all I have to do. So I think girls just tend to like overpose and like squeeze and flex. And if you have the tissue, you don't have to squeeze. You just yeah. hit it. Um, yep. Something else I see with the squared glutes is when girls are really bending over a lot. So they yes. really push those glutes back again. They're trying to maybe create glutes that aren't there, or show the judges their tie-ins. Um, it's best if you, if you have the tissue and you have the density, you should just be able to do that arch in your glutes or arch in your pelvis and that's it. That's all you need yes. to do. So that's typically where I start to see that, that square like shape. Agreed. And then if you question this look, watch a figure competitor and how they pose in their back pose, because most figure competitors do squeeze, right? Correct. You're going to see that it kind of squares off the outer part of their glute. You see the striations come through, which again, they say they don't want to see that in bikini. So they see the striations come through in that, in that glute when you squeeze, they're doing that because they want to create the same level of conditioning from top to bottom. Now, here's another thing to, to think about as well. We keep the hair on our back in bikini because guess what? We have better conditioning up top than we do on the bottom. So why do you think figure competitors squeeze their glutes? <laughs> to balance their conditioning because they got to take the hair off their back. Their back is automatically going to be leaner and more conditioned than their lower half. So they got to squeeze them squeeze. to make it look the same. Yep. Yep. So you know, if you think about it that way, it's like you shouldn't be doing that because they don't want that in bikini. They don't want to see your back. They don't want to see an imbalance in, in conditioning. So they don't want squeezing versus when and, you go to the higher levels. Yeah. And a big, a big part of the back pose that's graded is that upper outer glute and mm-hmm. it should be circular. It's yep. very bubbly and circular. So when you squeeze, it just makes it very sharp. And that's yes. what we're talking about really is that squared off look is that upper outer glute. And you could, you could take pictures of yourself you know, next time you do your check-ins and do it with your glutes squeezed and you'll see how different it looks versus mm-hmm. just relax your normal yep. back pose. And then you'll see what that squared off shape looks like. And also this is something that I've gone through with myself and some of my posing clients and stuff too. We talk about this a lot with mobility. Sometimes you have tightness, you have tightness in your legs, you have tightness in your adductors, you have tightness in your hamstrings. And because of that, it's pulling on the glute while you're in your back pose so I know for myself, when I'm tight on my right side, I get this little divot on the top of my right, my right glute because I'm me tight too. through there. Yeah. And that's, that's mobility. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's not me squeezing. That's my legs are too tight. <laughs> yeah. You well, know? your quadratus. Uh-huh. Yeah. All that yep. needs to be. Yeah. That's right. So if you start seeing that stuff and you're not feeling yourself squeeze, there's probably something else that's off. So get in there and try to figure it out. You know, I had that actually new posing client this past week and that's what it was. I was like, I got her to loosen up everything. Even when she was just standing there, she still had that pull on the top. I was like, you need to get in there and figure out what's tight. Yeah. I was like, (laughs) you know, get in there and stretch, foam roll, do whatever you got to do because you got to loosen that up. I was like, even when you're just standing here relaxed, your glutes are squared off. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, so that's all part of it. That's all part of it. So all right, let's keep going down. So they, they have pictures up here from Jennifer Dory winning her winning the Olympia a couple of years ago. So again, the criteria has not changed. It's the same criteria. So <laughs> there's that part too. Uh, okay, so here's our bikini competitor rules. Competitors will compete in a two-piece suit. No more one-pieces. Uh, the bottom of the suit must be V-shaped. No thongs are permitted. Competitors can compete in an off-the-rack suit. All swimsuits must be in good taste. Athletes will be warned about improper suits and are advised to bring two suits to check in. If the fronts of the suit bottoms are too low, the judges deem them so at check-ins. Then the suit must be constructed higher. Otherwise, the athletes will be scored down if the suit is not the standard. Competitors must wear high heels. Competitors may wear jewelry. Um, so this is a little different based on the show. Um, they used to, they used to check suits a lot at check-ins. 
like all the time. Now they're not. Yes. Now they don't do it. Yep. Yeah. And the reason for that is because girls would come to, to check-ins in one suit and come to the show in a different one. A different one. Yeah. So, yep. So, yep. so now what they're doing is they're checking you backstage. Yes. <laughs> so um, if your suit is not up to standard and not up to par backstage, they're not going to let you get on stage. Or if you do, you're going to get scored down for the suit not being up to standard. So, and I'm seeing this a lot more now that we're getting into season. They're commenting on this. One of my amateurs this past weekend, part of her feedback was that her suit bottom was too low and she needed more scrunch in the back. So she needs to go buy a new suit bottom. So uh -huh. I don't know if this has to do with things that happened last year. We know that some girls had some really tiny suits and got exposed on stage. So I think that that's kind of carrying over to this season. They're kind of cracking down on it. So if you mm -hmm. feel like your suit is questionable, you need to talk to your coach. That's right. That's right. You know, at the end of the day, what happens a lot of times too is this, you just start putting your suit on correctly. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So a lot of times this can be fixed with a little bit of a bikini bite, um, pulling it up a little higher in the front, a little lower in the back. You know, I see that a lot. And this is, as a suit designer myself, this is one of the things that bothers me because girls will pull it down in the front, up in the back. You actually need to reverse that Correct. a lot of times. You got to reverse that a lot of times. Um, sometimes when you have the suit bottom up too high in the back, it'll actually show your tailbone in the back. I've talked about this a lot on my reviews. Even with the pros, they do this a lot. You'll see that that shallow part on the top of your glutes. And your suit should cover that because if it doesn't cover that, your glutes are going to look square like we just talked about, right? Yeah. So just pulling it down, even a half an inch in the back, it'll come up a half an inch in the front. And then all of a sudden, you balance that suit bottom out. So, Sean, would you say that if someone hits a front post mm -hmm. and then, you know, the connector on the front to the back, mm -hmm. if on the back near the glute, you could see the fabric coming mm -hmm. up on the side glute, wouldn't you say that that means that the, that the suit is pulled too far on the glutes, they need to bring it down. So you just literally see that connector, not, so not it, the fabric. It, it probably depends on the physique. Um, okay. and it probably depends on the connector length too. True. Um, so just as a, as a, FYI, most of my connectors are anywhere from six inches to six and a half inches long. Uh, depends on the, the style that we're doing, that kind of thing. Um, so I would say it's more about what are we seeing on the front of the suit? I don't have a problem with the suit being low, but when you see it too low is when we're starting to see almost like this is where you shaved you know what the I mean? Yeah. Like right where you shaved yeah. or like the gapping. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you see that it needs to come up a little higher and typically the suit's going to actually fit you a little bit better. If you go up a little higher too, like if you're down that low, it probably will bag a little bit. It probably will gape a little bit. Um, you know, if I'm actually like my worst fear, I know it's like my worst. Fear. Yeah. If you, if it's, I know for mine, I'm like, if they're, they're, I've actually created a few different cuts now. Um, I was doing a lot of V cuts and now we're kind of, again, going away from the V cuts. So it's, if you don't wear it right, it's going to bag a little bit. So if I see you at the show, I'm going to pull, I'm going to yank it up, you know? And yeah. if you're not, if you're not sure, bikini bite it there, you know what yeah. I mean? And then that way, no matter which way you turn, it's not going to open up. It's not going to gape or whatever, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really dependent upon the physique and the suit. So your, your suit should really, most people have like a little, um, like you have your V into your waistline with your, with your abs and everything, but then you have like a little lower back piece right, right here. Like your suit fabric should sit right on that lower back area mm -hmm. okay. right there. Typically, right. Okay. This is not across the board, but typically it should sit right there. And if it does, then it should V down into your butt crack for yeah. better, like, for better, better term. It right. should V down into your butt crack correctly. Now, if it's too small and it does that, you still might see a little bit of that upper glute. You know, there's a few suit companies that have these really teeny tiny little like tee back cuts and stuff. And basically uh, nobody can get away with those cuts because they're just so small, you know? Right. Yeah. They do um, not want that tee mm -hmm. back look right now. Mm -hmm. No, that, that would be considered the thong that they say no yes. thongs on stage. Yeah. Yes. That. And then also the actual fabric that's between your butt cheeks. <laughs> You know, for some girls, they have really round, juicy glutes and you lose that completely. Um, for other girls, they're a little leaner through that backside. And if it pulls too much, you see skin, you see things mm -hmm. you shouldn't be seeing if it's not mm -hmm. thick enough. You know, um, I have that with one of my girls right now. Uh, I'm making her a new suit bottom. She just signed out with me as a client because her other suit bottoms just don't cover that enough. So she needs to have some coverage back there. A, it's you just don't want pictures like that. B it takes away from the fullness of your glutes. It makes you look thinner. 
Yeah. You know, so less fabric is not always better. Nope. So. Yep. The correct uh, size and shape of the bottoms will accentuate your glutes and mm -hmm. they will shape the glute. So, right. you know, if you have too much fabric back there and your eye just goes straight to all fabric, it's going to make your glutes look smaller. You yep. know, if they're not really sitting right on top of the glutes, like you're saying, it can make them look shallower. So yep. um, it, it really does. Yep. So again, this is where, you, again, we're having a good coach and having a good eye is important. I know for myself, even I have, you know, I, I, if Jamie's there, I have her check my back and my bottoms because I can't see it. Or I record myself and make sure that they're sitting where they're supposed to be sitting when I do the, when I do my video, because sometimes you put the suit bottoms on, you just don't know what you're showing, what you're not. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So just set your phone up and record it and make sure that it's sitting in the right spot. You know, very, very easy. things like that. Yeah. Very simple easy. things like that. So yeah, just be aware of that. And even if you don't know what you're looking at, again, that's where your coach is, in, is, is coming in play for you. Right. Yes. So, um, this note here was from a, <laughs> a few years ago. I'm going to go ahead and read it because this makes me laugh as a suit designer. This makes me laugh. So it says note the NPC, NPC worldwide and IPB professional league have not authorized or granted the license and authority to exclusive exclusivity to any competition suit company or designer to be their official suit maker and to advertise their suits as an official cut or approved cut. There has never been an official or approved pro cut bikini for any division. That term was erroneously created by suit makers. This was a thing a few years back. I won't name the company that did it, <laughs> but they were saying that the, the soup cut was approved by Sandy. And um, no, <laughs> just no, uh, because as we know, and as we talked about just a minute ago, every soup cut is going to look different depending on the girl that's wearing it. Right. So yeah. And can, the maker. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't have like, if you have big, huge, glucy, juicy wellness glutes, you can't be wearing this micro mini thong thing that a, that a small little bikini competitor could, could wear. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to look different. It's going to look gonna different. Be like, oh, sucked up. Yep. Yeah. So there is no cut that is approved. Like, again, we've, we've adapted these names as far as like pro cuts and things like that. I didn't used to call my, my suits that, but because other suit makers were, I kind of had to because that's what they started to understand. But it's one of those things, it's like, just because you're getting on stage, it doesn't mean you need a pro cut. You know Correct. what I mean? Yes. Like, it's, it's just a name. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean yes. that you're a pro. It doesn't mean that you're an amateur. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's just a name. Yeah. So, and this like, is something I thought as an amateur. I was like, oh, I can yeah. buy a pro cut suit because I'm not a yeah. pro yet. But then I got on the call with my suit maker at the time and they were like, no, it's not like that. It's just the term of this cut of suit. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I could see how that could be confusing. I, I didn't even think about that. I'm glad that we touched yes. on that. Yeah, it's it. I get it all the time, and girls are like, "Well, can I wear a pro cut?" And the, the the short answer is yes, you can wear a pro cut no matter what level of competition you are on, if your glutes will actually like work with it. You Correct. Know what I mean? Right. Most right, right. most of the time, I'll be honest. Most of the time, if you're not a pro, I'm not putting you into one of my pro cuts because they're small. And the only way that, that that's going to look good on you is if you have the glutes to support it. So most of the time, if you are an NPC competitor and you're coming to me, you're getting a, what I call a national level suit, yeah. which is a quarter of an inch bigger. <laughs> it's just a quarter of an inch. <laughs> it's a quarter of an inch bigger on the actual coverage. So most of the time you're going to be in that coverage. If you're a relatively new competitor and you're a little bit more shy and you don't want to show as much, then we'll do the local level coverage, which again is about a half an inch more. And then we have a full cut too, which I rarely use. Full cuts are, are just if the girl actually really wants to be covered. Um, that's like a basic, like almost, almost like a normal bikini at that point. Um, but the majority of girls, unless you're a pro, the majority of girls are getting in that national level cut. That's And that's I would say that's, that's pretty spot on because like when I turned pro, uh, I had a, a different bottom, you know, because mm -hmm. I was as an amateur. And then mm -hmm. when I my pro debut, one of the very first thing I noticed in the lineup and the comparison photos, I had way too much fabric on my bottoms. And yeah. compared to the other pros. So yeah. I had to get a new suit bottom because I was competing two weeks later, like pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And then I looked more in line and, yep. and it's, but if I would have showed up with the suit bot, that kind of suit bottom at nationals, then I would have been a different outlier in yeah. not a good way. So yeah. it, it is, you're just going to, you know, the, the 
amateur league versus the, the pro league, they do have different looks and things like that. So you can't really get away with that as an amateur quite yet. So that's where you just gotta, you gotta have someone like Sean or a good suit company that knows what mm-hmm. works for you and your body type and that's just right. follow along with that. And listen, there's been times where like a girl will get a suit and I'm sure you've seen this too, Sean, where it's like the cut just doesn't work for them. What yep. we thought would work for them, it just doesn't work. And we just figure out a new suit. We ship that okay. one back, you know? So it's, it's, we don't always get it right the first time, but we will get it right. We yeah. We will figure out what works. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes you don't even know until you get on stage and then you're like, well, Absolutely. this could have been a little bit better. We could have done this a little bit better. That could have sat Absolutely. a little differently. This color could have been a little bit different, you know, things like that. You don't know until you put the tan on until you get under those lights, you know? Correct. So you just keep working with it. You just keep working with it. And then once you find your, your magic solution, then you stick with it at that point, you know, until you grow your physique or whatever and need a new one. <laughs> So Find your luck and stick with it. That's right. That's right. Um, so they go into the height classes here as well. This is this was updated back in 2017. This is for the amateurs. Um, so just to be clear, it's height classes. Yes. There's no weight caps. Correct. Um, so people ask that all the time. We're like, what's the ideal weight or what's the ideal measurements? It doesn't matter. That's why no. this is here. It does not matter mm-hmm. what your weight is on stage criteria or bikini category you could be you know you're standing next to a girl at your same height and she could be 10 pounds less or more than you they just right. look for that criteria above whatever that's weight right. at that criteria in your height class in the amateur league that's right going back to what we were talking about at the very beginning of this where i was saying i need to be bigger anyway so i'm not worried about my weight dropping right now you know what i mean so it doesn't matter and then once you get to the pro league there's no height classes so no <laughs> you know, it's just, it is what it is when you're, and when you're, you know, tall, like me, you have to have a lot more size when you're short, you have to stay a little bit more streamlined because you can't, you can't get big and full and round and compare against girls that are five foot six with your five foot. Throw off your symmetry. Yep. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a balancing act to stay in, stay in the criteria there. Um, so this is bikini check-ins. This is bikini division competitors will be checked in at the, and measured the same as fitness, figure, wellness, and women's physique competitors. Again, nobody gets weighed. Everybody just gets hide, hide it in. That's it. Um, it says, again, we just went over this with the suits being uh, inspected. Um, and like they said here, they're talking about this. They're saying if you change your competition suit from prejudging to finals and the judges deem it not to conform to the rules, you'd be directed to leave the stage. So again, this is what they're doing backstage now because they're not really checking at check-ins. They're checking before you get on stage. So they're, they're saying it right here. If they think you don't, your suit doesn't work, they're going to make you go change it. So go ahead and pay for all that hair, makeup, tan, and try to get in with that suit. And they're just going to see you home. See you later. Yep. yep. So here's a little bit on there on the presentation. So your competitors will walk on stage alone and perform their model work walk. Um, the model walk consists of the following. You're going to walk to the center of the stage, stop, do a front stance, Full turn to the back stance, full to the, turn to the front, face the judges as directed, and proceed to the side of the stage. No lewd acts are permitted. Length of time allowed is 10, 10 seconds. So this is um, approximate, right? Some people see see that 10 seconds, they get really freaked out that they have to keep it to 10 seconds. As long as you're doing a good pace, like I tell people, I'm like, hit your front pose, count to three, turn, into transition, hold that for a beat. Next transition, back pose, hold for three, transition back to the front hold for three and off right there. You've got about 10 to 12 seconds. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And you're good. You know, you don't yep. have to be exact. Right. But then the other thing too, is that they mentioned you're going to walk to the center of the stage. I see a lot of girls when they first come to me with posing, they think they got to do the whole T walk and everything. T-walk. Yep. No pros do nope. that. Amateurs do not. Okay. They're not even letting the pros do it these yeah. days. They're taking like, it out with the, with the pros. Yep. Mm-hmm. So there's no need for it. You know, there's no these- light in the back of the stage. Just mm-hmm. go to the box and get your photos. Like yeah. that is really the way to think about it. Like the more you're in the back of the stage, they're not lighting it back there. So yep. you're just wasting time and they can't see you back there. That's right. And all you're doing is giving yourself the opportunity to show more weaknesses. As Absolutely. Well. Yes. The so, more you're on stage, the more you have the potential to show flaws. Yep. And I even said that with my check-in with Jamie this morning. So I, I always send videos in with my check-in and I do my routine and all that kind of stuff. My routine right now is just over a minute it long. And I said to her, I said, just so you know, this will not be my final routine. <laughs> it's like, I'm just doing all of this so I can see all of the angles. I said, but once we get closer, I'm going to chop it down. You know, yeah. it does, I don't need all of this. This is just too long. You know, I, I want my, I want my routine to clock in at 50 seconds. If it's at 50 seconds, I'm good. You know, yeah, then I because know you could go to 40, you mm-hmm. could go to 60. Yes. That's right. Depending yep. on the speed when I get on stage, hundred yep. percent. So yep. I know when I, when I record my video, if my video is getting up and over a minute, it's too long. So yep. I know yep. that already, but yeah. 
you know, there's no, and again, I don't think there's anything wrong with practicing all of that. Cause I'm doing my walk, I'm doing my turns I'm transitioning on both sides, all this kind of stuff. Cause I want to see how my body's developing through this, but then I'll take out the stuff that's weak, you know, and I just won't use it. So, yeah. Yeah. um, what else on the, on this? I think that is pretty self-explanatory at that point. So the comparison round, again, this is your two piece, <laughs> no, no more one pieces. Uh, competitors will be judged wearing two piece swimsuits and heels. The competitors will be brought back out in a group and directed to do a full front and back stance. Judges will have the opportunity to compare competitors against each other in half turns. No side judging permitted front and back only. Uh, we don't want to see the arm off to the side with the elbow bent, and the wrist bent upward or downwards. That they're talking about with the arm thing. They're talking about either the teacup or they're also talking about your arm looking like a figure competitor. So those, both of those things you don't want. Yeah. yeah the elbow like out that, or like that. Or the, correct. Hand so it's a, straight down. Perfect. Yep. Straight down. Mm -hmm. Straight Bicep down. Bicep forward. That's how yep. you need the figure arm, but then you don't want to look like you're holding something or teapotting. So it's mm -hmm. just by hand down and then thumb towards the judges. Yeah. That the thumb part. So I tell people all the time, a lot of times when they put their hand down, their thumb is going to be in towards their body. So I tell them to twist their thumb out to here. Yep. Right. Not to here. Yep. To here. Yep. So what that does is that puts everything in line. So you can have a nice straight arm. It's going to pull your elbow in um, and it's not going to make your, your arm go flare out. You're going to see the delt pop really nice. And then you're also going to have the hand far enough away from your glute. What I see a lot of times happen with the thumb is in is that your, your hand is actually covering your glute when you're standing yes. in your front pose. So as soon as you go like this, all of a sudden that just puts everything in the right position. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to go too far because I don't like seeing the palm of your hand. So yeah, it's very distracting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's a happy medium. It's always a happy medium. Everything is always a happy medium down the, down the line. Right. And when we're talking about um, comparisons, your comparisons are exactly the same as your individual. You're doing yes. the exact same thing. The only difference is, is that you're going to hold in each pose until the judge tells you to turn. That's it. That's, it. That's the only yep. difference. Everything else is the same. Yes. So keep it simple, right? Scoring. Judges will be scoring competitors using the following criteria, balance and shape, overall physical appearance, including complexion, skin tone, poise, and overall presentation. So, you know, we talked about that a minute ago. Um, this, your presentation makes a difference. Your skin tone makes a difference. That's how your tan looks. You know, if you're not skin prepping your tan or skin prepping prior to getting your tan and you're all janky all over the place with your tan. That's not good. You got to have an even tan. You know, I personally have issues with my sit bones being too dry. So I have to figure that out to be able to smooth that out. All of that matters. You've got to figure out what works best for you. Some people like to do the DIY. Some people like to get sprayed. So it just depends on you and you've got to practice it and figure out what's going to work best for your, for your body. Because if they can't see your, your physique through the tan, there's a problem, you know? Yes. We talked about this with Yulia and the suntan uh, sunburn that she got, you know, a month ago or so or whatever it was. I mean, they literally were like, what's wrong with the tan? They thought it was the tan. It was her skin. You know, it was her skin falling off from getting sunburned. So don't go get sunburned. <laughs> and moisturize. Moisturizing. Yeah. I mean, like literally four weeks out from your show, I would go overkill on moisturizer. Yeah. Do it morning and, and PM. Moisture to your skin resolves so many tanning issues. Mm -hmm. So if you can overly moisturize. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's something with the master skin too, as you get older, your skin starts to lose that. So you've got to do it more and more and more and more, you know, um, just part of it, just part, part of the fun of aging, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, and where you live too, you know, most yeah. are like in the middle of the year, which is summertime, like you're dry, you know, you're yep. dehydrated, whatever. So you got, got to take care of that skin to take yep. the moisture. Like I said, it solves, I would say seven out of 10 tanning issues. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> sure. The same thing with your, with your face, with makeup too, you know, making sure that your skin tone on your face is nice and smooth too. Making sure Derma that you skin. before a yep. show, like mm -hmm. getting all the little fuzz, peach fuzz off your face. Uh -huh. It matters. Take care of yourself. Take care of your skin. Yep. I've put these, you know, the transformation pictures of the before and after when I do makeup and, you know, a girl looks like me before. And then after she looks like she put on 10, co 10 coats of paint because it's, it's really dark makeup to match the tan, you know, and that doesn't go on easy. If your skin is a mess, you know, Correct. you've got to make sure that your skin is in good condition so that it goes on nice and smooth. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of that is dependent upon you prior to the makeup artist ever touching you. So, yeah. you know, make sure you take care of that stuff. Cause they do look at that and they pay attention to that stuff. And we talked about that with, um, uh, Brittany Gillespie with her, her feedback. 
they wanted to see, they wanted to see better glam on her because her, it was just not popping in the right spots. You know what I mean? Right. So that all matters. You know, when you're yes. at this level, that all matters. And when you're going for a pro card, that all absolutely matters when you're going for a pro card, you know? Yes. So um, they've got some, this is what we were talking about with the incorrect posing with the arm up, the teapot arm, um, just relaxing that seat. As we were talking about here, I click on it. She's got that thumb again, down, nice and nice and relaxed. This could, this arm could even come down even more. She's okay. actually got it out a little bit. She, yeah, she could, she can rotate it a little bit yep. more. She can. If she just rotates that thumb, it's going to make the elbow come in. It's going to relax everything a little bit more. So we're even critiquing the critiques here. <laughs> Leave it <time. laughs> know, right? um, But you can clearly see here why they don't want to see the, you know, the teapot arm and things like that. That's what we were talking about, pull, pulling that arm up and everything. They don't want that. That's not part of the criteria. Okay. Um, so if you're doing that and you're posing, you need to relax that arm. You can see um, how distracting it is. Yeah. And my eye goes to the arm, not to yeah. the incredible physiques you know? right so it's just about that just that look top to bottom i'm not yep. even looking at her physique i just go to what what is her arm doing yep and you can't <laughs> see the shoulder nothing you know what i mean no. there's nothing there so and a girl a woman that the uh, woman i was posing with before this call like she was like i don't just don't feel like i'm doing enough with my arms and my routine i'm like you shouldn't be doing a lot mm -hmm. with your arm do you want them to look at this or do you want them to look at this that's you right know? This is just a compliment to the physique. That's right. We talk about this all the time. Like the extra flair from your posing comes from your confidence. It doesn't come from our movements. It doesn't come from your hands flying around. It comes from your confidence overall. Yes. So you can tell, we say, we say it all the time when you go to a show, the, the minute the girl walks out on stage, you can tell if she's confident or she's not. That's before she's ever even hit a pose. Yeah. Before she's ever even hit anything, she just walks out on stage. You know she's got the it factor if she doesn't. Absolutely. You can tell by eye contact and how their, their shoulders are. Yep. Absolutely. The first thing I look at. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure. So that in a nutshell is the criteria. And again, you can go through this with every one of the divisions. They have them for all of them up here. Um, anything else you wanted to add on this? Um, I, uh, the only thing I would add, I guess, is just, this is why feedback is so important after your show. Mm -hmm. Um, my first coach was like this, and I just did a consult yesterday with a woman whose who's coach said this too, that she didn't need to get feedback because the judge said that they know what they want to bring and, you know, that they're trying to bring the look that that coach wanted to stage. And, you know, if you're having a smaller coach like that, that's not at every show and, you know, one of the top coaches we could say, um, it's it's not about them bringing the package that they think looks best. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. not giving the placings or the pro cards. It's no. about a coach that understands how to bring you into the show to the standard at your best. Right. Um, so I guess just as me, you know, reiterating, I know we're really big on, with us on Fit Body Fusion and all of us as coaches that work for Fit Body, like staying after your show for feedback is so important. That way you can hear mm -hmm. directly from the the mouth of the people that put this together where you need to be better and what you need to do to, to fix it. And if your coach tells you, you don't need to stay for feedback, I know what your feedback's going to be. I know what the look I want to bring is. You're probably not going to continue to get better. Yeah, no, it's true. So, you know, and then sometimes too, like we get so close to it, you know, we get as competitors and as coaches, we get so close to it. We're like, we think we know, but we just don't see it with that fresh set of eyes sometimes, you know, and sometimes the judge will see you and be like, this is what we need to do because this, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, that makes total sense. You know, that's yeah. why a lot of people, like when I do my show reviews and stuff, a lot of the girls after I do the show re reviews will DM me or whatever and say, oh, thank you for saying this, blah, blah, blah. Just because they're so close to themselves that they didn't see it like I saw it. Because I see them as an objective person looking at criteria. I don't see it as this is my friend on stage or my client or whatever. It's not, that's not, not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the criteria and how they fit or how they don't. So sometimes I just see things that they don't see. And that's what judges do. Correct. You know? That's what judges do. They see you according to those criteria points and say, this is what needs to happen, blah, 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 blah. So you need to take what they say and, and go with it. And sometimes they can't give you an exact answer, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, Yulia is a good example from this past weekend. They're like, we just want to see you pop more. And they gave her a bunch of suggestions as far as how she could pop more. It could be any one of these things. They just want to see her pop more. Right. And her feedback is the same as mine when mm -hmm. I got into the league. They were mm -hmm. like, I don't know what we don't like about her. 
this is what they would say to me for my first four to six shows. I don't know what we don't like about her, but something is just off. She doesn't Mm -hmm. pop. Mm -hmm. And it was the tan. It was the hair. It was the glam. It it was all of it. And so we just kept making small changes. Small changes. Yes. And I think, I don't know. I think another reason too, maybe why people don't get feedback is they're, they're afraid of like what that looks like in that conversation. And I want to be like, the judges are very respectful. They're very nice. Most times they're honest. I've gotten, I went up to the judging table to get feedback with an athlete and they were like, I have nothing written down for you, but go ahead and pose for me right here. So they're, they are honest, but they're very respectful. Like this Mm -hmm. is not like a nitpicking session. It it is, it's, it's a very good conversation and it's a great way for you to get to know them too. They are Mm -hmm. human. They remember you. Um, So it's, don't be afraid, you know, yeah. and, and I am a very, I'm a shy person, you know, with people I don't know. So I remember going up to the table for feedback and everybody's like, go talk to Sandy, go get feedback. I'm like, I don't want to go talk to Sandy. And Sandy's yeah. the coolest person to go talk to. And she is yeah. so sweet, you know, Tyler too. Like he's just very direct and, but very mm-hmm. respectful. It's not scary. It's yes. very professional. Yep. Um, so don't be afraid of it. And it, it's good for you. Like, again, mm-hmm. if you're going to get a pro card, if you, that's what you want to do, a part of that is showing up and it's, it's like going to talk to your boss. Hey, yeah. where can I be better? That's, like, right. that's what a professional would do. So you got to kind of, you know, put on your big girl panties yep. and go smile and go get that feedback. Like that and is remember, a I mean, when you do that too, like you said, they, they, they typically do have stuff written down for you. So what yes. that means is, is in their head, they're, they're logging that in their head. So the next time you see you on stage, they're going to say, well, I told her this, you know, why didn't she fix this or what, or, or, Oh, she tried to fix this. We're going in the right direction. Let's let's keep going in that direction. You Correct. know what I mean? Like, yep. It's, That's how we it's, get better. Yeah, and they pay attention to that stuff. They they're like, yeah, you're doing the right thing, or well, we kind of liked you better when you did this. You know, so go back to that or whatever it might be. Because sometimes they don't know as well. Like I said, like, Correct. They they sometimes they'll give you feedback and they'll just be like, we think we need you to do this a little bit differently, but we haven't seen you do this a little bit differently, so we don't know if that's what we actually want. So. Maybe God, you should I try just this. to like Lizzie Martinez and her hair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she, you know, I loved her fire engine red hair. Yeah. But they just didn't like it. So mm-hmm. then she tried to go blonde, I think. And they were like, nope. And then she, pro- she probably did four or five colors that season and then finally landed in this like beautiful chocolate brown color. And they were like, yes, that's yeah. it. But she had to change her hair like three to four times in order to find that look. And then finally they were like, that's it, you yep. know? She was adaptable and she kept taking that feedback. And I mean, we're talking about something that's like pretty significant for a woman, yeah. your hair, your hair your color. Hair. And she was like, I want to be better. So tell me what I need to do. And I'm just going to keep doing it. And then fi- finally she figured out her look. Yeah, um, absolutely. But she wouldn't have known that with, without getting feedback. So. Yeah. And again, like I said, like there's sometimes it's just like, we think we like this. We're not sure. And then she gets on stage with a different hair color. And like, no, that's Stop, not it. Change it again. <laughs> it's like, try it again. We're, we're close, but no. Mm-mm. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's frustrating. And for, you don't know until you know, like, until you try it. You just, have to, you just have to throw some shit up against the wall sometimes. I mean, I've had to do the same thing. I think we all have at one point or another. We're like, well, you yeah. should try this pose a little differently, or you should try that pose a little differently. No, nah, we don't like that. No, we don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I totally changed my whole routine, but cool, thanks. Cool, you know? yeah, I'll go back. I'll go back to the old <laughs> one. Tr- try to marry the two. I know. It's like, and it is, It's it's. it feels sometimes like you're trying to hit a moving target. Target. The target really doesn't move. It's just the people around you are moving, you know? Yeah. So that's a great you, way to put it. It's just, it's just, is what it is. You've got, you've got to be adaptable and that's part of the fun of the game. That's part of the fun of the game. You know what I mean? If it was easy and we knew that, that we just did this, when we stepped on stage, we would win. It would, take, it would take some of the fun out of it. Absolutely. Know? If it was too easy, none of us would like this sport. No, for sure. Uh-uh. For it's sure. almost like we're always, it's just like we, we always related to golf. Like you're never going to going to shoot a perfect game of golf ever. It's never going to yeah. happen, but you're yeah. going to try. And that's yeah. the same thing in this sport. Yeah. Same thing in the sport. You're going to try exactly. to be perfect. You're never going to get it. Cause even Miss no. Olympia, when she walks on stage, gets told what she has Still to do has better to be next back. time. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're never going to hit it, but yeah. close. We could try. Are we closer? Yeah. yeah. Are we closer? Are we closer yeah. this time? <laughs> Oh my God. Well, on that note, um, I think we should end it right here. We have some questions, but we'll go into those next week when we do our next uh, session because we've gone pretty, pretty, pretty far on this on this podcast here today. We talked a lot at the beginning. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, you do say that you like to hear about what I we do. Know, so. What we do. So, yeah. you know, and I was talking like, you got the timestamps in the bottom. If you don't want to hear about us, then just skip past it. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> go right to the subject. Yeah, so we're good. We got this. So any closing thoughts that you want to give out um, in regard to any of this stuff? I think we covered everything pretty well. I think we covered everything. I'm I glad we did. did it. You know, yeah. we're, we're at the start of the season, you know, so everybody just hang in there if you're on prep right now, you know, and just make sure that you're sticking with that standard. And, you know, again, just like Sean said, like it, this, our sport's hard and it does feel like a moving target sometimes. And sometimes it's incredibly frustrating, but you have to look at every show as a moment of opportunity for feedback and just to get better. And, um, you know, just continue to work on yourself and bringing your best and you will, the more that you continue to get that feedback and you will. So, um, the, the criteria is the criteria though. There is a reason for the madness and that's, that is it. So it's right on NPC news online. That's right. We're trying to hit, we're trying to hit this magical box that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> so we just have to get as close as we can to it. With, it's almost like being blindfolded and shooting an arrow. But, Absolutely. you know, every time we go, we try to get a little bit closer to that bullseye, just a little bit closer. And again, that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it, it is. That, that's what makes it, that's, the that's, challenge. What keeps, that's what keeps us up at night. Especially as coaches, we're sitting here, how can we get closer to the target? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fun, but it is, it's, it's, it's like trying to, it's trying to figure out a puzzle, you know what I it mean? Is. It's, it's fun. It's a good time. Well, it's so. funny because like my girls at clash this past weekend, they both got third. So one spot away from the, uh, oh, national qualification. qualification, we went to go get feedback from Sandy after, and she had them both in second. Oh. So it's like my eye is to Sandy, yeah. <laughs> like what Sandy likes, but there's yeah. more judges. There's more judges on the panel. And, and that's it. You know, it's like, at least I walked away knowing I did what's what I knew Sandy would like being the head judge. But, you know, again, it's hard. Like, and I was up all night after that thinking what I could have done more, how I could have yeah. picked them better. And I brought the best. I brought the best I could for Sandy. And it's, it is what yeah. it is. You know, as a, co- a coach too, uh, yeah. someone that cares, we yeah. do the same thing. We that's wield right. over how to continue. I think that's, that's a best. really good point that you just made is as coaches, we want our athletes to do well. You know, we're on the same be- team. Mm-hmm. Apps like I, anything that's on any of my girls' plans is what I think is a hundred percent what's best for that athlete. Mm-hmm. Because, because if she wins, I win, that's you know? Right. So Oh, it should feel that way. Yeah. And sometimes if we, we lose, we both lose together. Sometimes we take it harder than the athletes do. <laughs> it's just the truth. And I'm like, it that's is. what keeps myself. My own prep does not keep me up at night. Theirs do because I want to make sure that I'm doing whatever I can to help them the best I can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. As an athlete, I just lay my head down at night. I wake up and I do my hour of cardio every morning and I'm just executing. But as a coach, I'm responsible to make sure that right. they come in and their best. And it's a whole nother level of stress, but it's it, that's fun for us too. Mm-hmm. That's the challenge as a coach. Absolutely. Right? So. Again, that's what keeps us invested in it. You know, the challenge of it. If I would say, I'm like, I could never be a nine to five job person. Cause there's just no challenge to that. It's just like, no. this is boring. I want a challenge. I want something that's going to push me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what keeps us good. Thank you to all of our athletes. Yes. Thank you <laughs> for the, and for the trust, you know, yes. putting, their tr- putting their trust in us because we do, we really do want to see the best for you at the end of the yeah. day, you know, yeah. just, let us do it for you and, and listen to what we have to say. And then that's where we're going to get our best results. You Absolutely. Know? Yep. Can't promise, can't promise perfection, but we're going to get as close as we can. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, guys. So with that, I think that's a great place to end it. Um, we'll be back again next week with another wonderful and amazing topic for you. But um, until then, like, comment, subscribe. This is episode number 36. And yeah, behind the bikini, we're out.